Hey, what's up? John Sonmez here from simpleprogrammer.com. And I got a question. I've been getting this question a lot, and I figured I'd finally answer this question. It, it, some of you aren't going to like the answer, but you know, this is what the answer is here, is, uh, is this question about how to get a programming job in the U.S. For, for those of you that are outside of the U.S. that want to come to the U.S. and get a programming job. Uh, the, the name, <laughs> the question asker in this case is the Swedish guy. I like that, the Swedish guy. Did your parents name you the Swedish guy? <laughs> All right. I would really like to live and work as a programmer in the U.S. I know there are numerous ways to get there. Uh, but to apply for an H-1B visa seems to be the most common, although being tied to your employer through an H-1B visa doesn't really put you in a good place when negotiating salary. Would you recommend any alternative? Also, how to market yourself specifically to U.S. employers from outside the U.S.? So I've got a couple of things to say here. First of all, uh, you know, as it's going to become harder, it probably already has become harder to get an H-1B visa, okay, because I, I think a lot of companies were abusing that, and they were abusing it in the sense that like you said here in this question, it became really difficult. It becomes difficult to negotiate, right? When you've, they're, they're your ticket over here to the, to the US. And so I think a lot of companies, what they're doing, I know this from experience because I talked to a lot of people that had H-1B visas, is they would get someone over, especially from places like India, and they would pay them a very, very low wage and they'd have them, it's, it's almost like a, like, a, like a prisoner, almost like indentured servitude. And then they would, you know, be, they couldn't leave because they, that, they were sponsoring their visa. So I agree, that's not the best way. It's also really hard to do at this point. I think that, you know, trying to get an H-1B visa is, is difficult because you're gonna have to prove that this company needs to hire you when they've got other candidates that they could possibly hire that they wouldn't have to pay the money and go through the whole process. Now some companies will do that and, and you can try that, but I went through all the, I wanna talk about the, the actual ways that you could get over here and then I wanna talk about some alternatives. So first of all, obviously we talked about an H-1B visa, it requires an advanced degree or six years experience, okay? I'm not a lawyer so don't count this as legal advice. Uh, <clears throat> The, this is my, my, my general understanding. You have an, an EB-1 visa, which requires extraordinary ab abilities. So if you win the Nobel Peace Prize, you can get an EB-1 visa and you can self-sponsor yourself, so you can apply for it yourself. Uh, chances of this are very, very slim. Like if you, there's like this list of, you gotta like publish something that changes the world. Like there, there's a whole list of different things that you have to do. I mean, if you're of that caliber, then sure, you, you could do that, okay? EB-2 requires an advanced degree, and I believe it requires someone else to sponsor you, but it's kind of a lottery system, very difficult to get in as well. Uh, advanced degree, I mean something like a master's degree or higher. EB-3 is less stringent, uh, but it's much longer, especially in China and India, so it could take like 10 years to get this. <laughs> so I, I don't think any of those are, are really really good choices, right? It, it, this is difficult to do. I, 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 in researching this, I, I realized that it, it is, is, is quite difficult. But, but here's the thing, okay? We're becoming more and more of a global economy. There's not really, I mean, maybe you want to get to the U.S. and, and maybe you, you can get there, but you can work for a U.S. company and someone be paid a U.S. salary outside of the United States, right? I mean, I have employees at, at simple programmer that work outside of the out of the US and you know maybe maybe you might not be able to get as high of a salary but if you want to work for you so that that would be a good way is to work where you're at or work remotely and and then apply for a company or apply for jobs at, at US companies another possible thing would be to get a student visa right so maybe come over here and apply for a college and student visas are real easy to get, then you can be in the US, okay? And you can be going to school and you can start interviewing for companies, right? And see if you can get, it'll be much easier, I think, to get an H-1B visa if you're already in the US and you can talk to companies and you can go on interviews, right? And, and you, can, you can do that kind of stuff. So that, that would make sense. Plus you can network a lot, right? Maybe you go and you, you go to school for a couple of years and your whole goal of going to school is that you're in the US and you can network with people, you can network with companies, you can eventually get that connection, right? These are just some ways outside of the box kind of thinking ways to do that. But, you know, aside from that, 
if you if you apply for some remote jobs, if you can become a freelancer, that's the other possibility, right? Is one thing you could do is you could just be a freelancer. Okay, you don't necessarily have to work in the U.S. You could work for U.S. companies, and and if you have good communication skills, especially if you can bridge the communication gap, so that you can be a person that can translate from another language in in your in your area. What what you know you can you can think about culturally, uh, linguistically, what kind of assets can you provide to a US company then you could work as a freelancer for them and you could you could do client work right especially if you like I said like you can do the if you have good communication skills so there's a lot of other alternatives but I mean this is hard this is not an, an easy thing I, and I know this from from doing the research and just from the many questions that they get a lot of people want to get to the US and, and become a, a programmer in the US but I think there's there's plenty of alternatives today. If it were up to me, if I were trying to do this, I would be getting a student visa. That's what I would be doing is I'd be going to school and I would be using that time to really just network and to, to try and meet as many people as possible, as many companies as possible, do interviews and do everything like that in order to, to, to get here. Again, I'm no expert in this, but that's just, just my tips and my advice and just for those of you that you know, we're wondering about this, you know, like I said, I did a little bit of the research and, and gave you the answer of the kind of visas or, or, or permits that, residency permits that you can get. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, none of them, none of them are, are really super attractive. It's, it's just not, it's just not an easy thing to do at all. So that's it. Uh, hopefully that answers the question. If you got some comments, if you got some other information, you know, again, I'm not an expert on this, but I, I thought I'd tack, try and tackle this question since so many people have asked about this. So, you know, part of the reason why I do this question also is I want your comments. Let me know. Is there some other way, some better idea? If you got it, leave it below. If you know, if you've done it before, then let me know. How did you do it? I'd be, I'd be curious. And maybe even interview someone that's, that's gone through this process and maybe is an expert in this. So, all right, that's all I got to say about that. I got one quick thing for you uh, before I go here. If you like this shirt that I'm wearing, if you're like, man, this is an awesome shirt. I want to, I want to, I want to trust the process. What's that all about? First of all, I got a playlist for you that you can check out about trusting the process. I'm not going to go over it in this video, but you can check that out. This shirt is to remind you to trust the process, not to focus on the results. Click on me if you want to buy one of these shirts and, uh, and, and look cool like me. All right. <laughs> I'll talk to you next time. Take care and, uh, and, uh, and subscribe if you haven't.